I know I'm totally aging myself ridiculously <laughs> and you're so young and fabulous and beautiful and everything. Okay, so when I was there, um, we had a blockbuster. Ah! I, know. Oh, nice. I'm all, I know, I'm aging myself. I know, guys, I know. Okay, yeah, good skincare. Okay, so anyway. This is like five or six years ago, so don't you worry. Yeah, <laughs> cool. don't worry. Well, this is more than five or six years ago. Um, <laughs> closer to 10. Welcome to Talk the Talk. It is fabulous to have you. So we have the amazing Kristen Montes here with us. Um, and again, we are a platform that celebrates anybody and everybody from the Rio Grande Valley, all of our beautiful, wonderful, creative people that we have here that we feel really deserve representation and heights because, I mean, unfortunately, we don't get as much as we should and as much as we deserve. Right, Kristen? That, that is very true. Thank you so much for inviting me on, honestly. Oh, of course. It's wonderful to have you. Um, I mean, I, I was looking at some of your information and your platform and such. So you are, are you a Valley native? I am, yes. Um, I'm from Harlingen, um, but I'm currently residing in Edinburgh. So. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, that makes sense because uh, you did study TV, film and film theory, French culture. I mean, goodness, you are schooled. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. Being an education girl myself, I'm all about it. So you studied all of these fabulous things here at UTRGV, correct? Yes, that's correct. I was um, a part of the film production program at UTRGV, which is Honestly, it's it's grown immensely since I started there. Um, there's tons of exciting things going on right now. Um, kind of sad that I missed it because I gra I graduated, so I'm missing out on all of them. Like maybe I should go back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> well, tell yeah. us about them. Tell us what are these things. Um. So yeah. So basically, um, the. So I was uh, doing, my concentration was film production. Mm -hmm. um, that falls under the umbrella of the, um, the uh, theater program. So there are a few different concentrations. I know right now they're going through a little bit of a overhaul. So mm -hmm. I think it might be a little bit different now. Um, if I'm not, uh, if, if, I, if I'm not wrong, I believe that film production is now gonna fall under um, mass communications oh, so yeah. there's still a film program it's just no longer under the theater program uh don't quote me on that i might be wrong <laughs> but there is definitely still a film production program um and uh yeah so pretty much um our classes would pretty much consist of um screenwriting we had a fantastic screenwriting class with uh, the very very talented david karen um he's worked on shows such as star trek uh, the Twilight Zone series. Um, so he's a fantastic mentor. Um, we also had uh, classes in acting. Um, I believe those are taught by uh, Troy Mikulowski. And uh, oh my goodness, I hope I didn't forget his name. <laughs> Brian Warren, there you go, Dr. Brian Warren as well. So um, one of the things that the university or at least our program was very um kind of what they try to drill into us was that they wanted for us to be well-rounded so while we do have a lot of film classes we also would have a lot of um theater classes um when i first started going there there were a few communications mass communications classes so we got to work on a on like a tv studio set that was really cool so yeah uh, when you come out of that program you're you're a pretty well-rounded person and I think you can really branch out into any um, sect of media that you desire. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's so interesting. I'm uh, personally not really very familiar with UTRGV's uh, film production program. I graduated from Florida State. Oh, and awesome. so thank you. So <laughs> um, at Florida State, I was in the theater program um, I did uh, a concentration in acting, 
uh, theater performance and acting. Um, but our theater program was completely separate from film production, literally like opposite sides of campus. Which so, I think is the norm usually. I think that is a, a thing that like usually they're all very separated. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. So it was it was amazing to hear that they work hand in hand with the theater. Now, a lot of us that were actors in the theater pro so when the when I went to Florida State, uh, the theater program was I think number three in the nation, and the film program was like the number two in the nation. They had won the Coca Cola Filmmaker Award um the year before and so it was it was a really big thing but they though they were completely separate they worked hand in hand in that there was always that communication between the acting program and the film students and but yeah it was uh it was pretty amazing because there was a a blockbuster and what they would do is all of the film school productions all of those films would go into the local and surrounding blockbusters. So there was a distribution um, avenue that went through Blockbuster in Northern Florida. So That's all of our indie films that were from the film school would be distributed through the area. And so it was kind of a cool thing because like, you know, how you have like the horror section, you have the comedy section, you yeah. had the FSU film section. And that is so cool. Like, that is really cool, honestly. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I can't even think of what would be the equivalent. That'd be like if Netflix put like our student films on or something. Or <laughs> hey, that would be cool. Something. That's that sounds like uh, that totally to me sounds like an awesome like grant proposal type of, of of topic or something. Definitely, definitely. As you, I mean, in terms of your your experience with the film program, I'm sure that. Uh, you mentioned how well-rounded they wanted you with acting with like I know our filmmakers did not take acting classes um, so they had acting they had you mentioned screenwriting and such um, did they have a soundstage for you guys um, at that time well, when I was there no they didn't have a soundstage I did hear talks that they are planning on getting a soundstage, though. Oh, that's awesome. So I think that's going to happen, which is really exciting for all the students that are going to be able to enjoy that. Um, but yeah, we um, also did, uh, I believe there's also a directing course, awesome. which is fantastic. Um, there is uh, one of the directing courses uh, required you to do like your, I guess it was like your capstone class. Mm -hmm. um, so that was your your actual like like your final film that you direct mm -hmm. um and they uh played it at the jeffers theater and uh, for friends and family to all come and watch and and that's a really great experience for the students because it, it really i think that might i think for a lot of students that's the first time they're showing their work to other people besides their peers and their professors and so for them to be able to gauge how their work is making people feel is 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 a really fantastic experience for them to have. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. What was your what was yours about? Oh, uh, so mine was um, it was a short film that I adapted from a full length script that I had written. Um, and it's about two sisters who uh, are putting together an estate sale and they come upon um, Nazi paraphernalia. And it, it like a whole bunch of shenanigans ensue. Um, so it was kind of like a comedy slash thriller, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. interesting. Yeah, hey, that's on my YouTube channel. Um, I did post it on there. Oh, so. awesome. Well, we definitely need it. Can you tell us your YouTube channel so you can share it with the world? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you can check out my YouTube channel. It's uh, Pretty Persuasion Productions. And uh, that's where I'm always posting my work. Um, I don't just do short films. I also do um, like, a, a, well, I also do like a weddings. That's something I'm starting to get into because um, that's a untapped market, I think in, well, in the Valley, obviously there are videographers, but um, definitely I would say my cinematography leans more to cinematic look, mm -hmm. um, cinematic aesthetics. So I shot my first wedding last summer in the mountains of Black Hawk, Colorado. Um, and that was a very interesting experience. Um, 
we were very high up in altitude and I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I definitely felt like I was dying. Um, <laughs> yeah, the breathing situation gets a little, yeah. a little dicey up there. <laughs> I grab my equipment and I'm like, okay, I can do this. It was, it was a, it was a, definitely a workout for sure. But the, the video came out beautiful. I even shot a few pictures for them. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous. Just, just stunning. Honestly, that that whole area was like great to shoot there there's so many things that you can do and you know yeah. it's it's literally their love story and it's the culmination of their love story and I think that's such a fresh beautiful perspective for you to be able to take that on for a couple because you're looking at it through really through the eyes of a storyteller yeah um, it was really fun like I think in the when in the post-production of it was kind of where I was it was the most exciting for me because that was where I was beginning to piece together everything. And so that was really where the story started to unfold. And, and, uh, and yeah, it was just really exciting to do. I was like, wow, I, this is something that I didn't think I would um, initially enjoy, but I'm really glad that I did it because um, it's exciting to see like what else I could do for, you know, anybody else who's having a wedding. Um, it would be really fun to do. <laughs> That's exciting. That's so exciting. And you know, it seems like your experience here at UTRGV really brought that, that uh, spark for you. Just, it, it seems like it was more of a catalyst to be able to get the wheels turning, you know, to be able yeah. to find different things. Like I would say uh, I'm, a lot of the things that I learned in the program at UTRGV um, kind of taught me how to adapt my skills to the real world. So um, I definitely feel like, you know, obviously a lot of people are going to go off, they're going to do film, they're going to work in film industry, but sometimes, you know, unfortunately that's not the case for everyone. So it's good that we have, that I, I was able to, you know, get the tools and the knowledge to adapt the skills that I learned for film and TV and put them to use in other things. So that's a very resourceful uh, thing to have um, obtained there. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It sounds like you really enjoyed your time. Like it really does. I, did. I really did. Um, another thing that I guess uh, uh, I want to talk about really quick, just a, like a quick little like, hey, shout out to you. Because um, when I was there, um, I, I double minored in French cultural studies, but I also did film studies, which is like totally different from like film production or theater or anything. Um, it's actually a branch of the English department Ooh. and um, it's a really small department, but it's amazing. And I can't, I can't recommend it enough. If you're a student going to UTRGV for film, uh, if you're just a film lover, let's say like you're doing something totally different, but you love film, um, a great, uh, like a great minor to just take. I think it's 18 credits. Um, and uh essentially what you're doing is you're studying film theory, um, you're studying film history. Um, it's incredibly insightful. Um, I think for me as a film production student, uh, it really helped me understand why is a shot shot like this? Like what is the psychology behind it? And um, really opened me to cinema that I'd never seen before. Um, I remember um, I took a class that was called Twist Cinema um and we essentially just watched films that had twist endings <laughs> oh wow which is really cool yeah so we watched like um it was one of the ones we watched uh I think we watched Martha Martha May Marlene it's like a movie with Elizabeth Olsen mm -hmm. Martha May Marlene that's what we watched with Elizabeth Olsen it was really good um we watched a ton of films and oh, we watched a David Lynch film in that class too. Now that I think about it, I think. And um, so, yeah, so it, it's like studying uh, the films and understanding why they are shot the way they're shot and understanding why the director chose to depict the story in the way that they did. And so I was really able to take that and apply it to, you know, the way that I was making things in my film production classes. And not a lot of, not a lot of my peers knew it existed. I was like, have you guys heard of this class? Like I just took like a, I took a Japanese cinema class. Have you heard of that? And they're like, what? I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, that's nobody so knew it existed. 
That seems like it would be so enriching yes. for a film student, you know, because a lot of times, you know, as the lay person, we watch films to be entertained, to be taken away from our everyday. And you're not necessarily thinking, okay, the shot is being done from an up, you know, from not an upward angle, well, like from a downward a angle. Where you're view, looking down. kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. In a bird's eye view. And the purpose is because you want to get this ethereal feeling of whatnot. And I feel that just as we take apart and analyze literature, so often that can easily be done with film. And there are so many directors that make such beautiful and really poignant choices that evoke so many emotions and tap into memories. And a lot of that is, as you mentioned, it's psychological. And a lot of that is done purposefully. And as, as a person that would be interested in film, um, or that would want to pursue that arena of, of study, I think that that's so valuable to really look into that because it's not just about, hey, let me get my friends together and this is going to be hilarious. Let's do this. This is so funny. It's like, no, there's so much more that you can do with it. And so that is really amazing. You've got to give us, you've got to give us a list of movies. Oh like yeah, suggestions. Um, I would love to hear your suggestions. Um, well, I took I took a ton of classes. Um, one of the classes I took uh, was well, one of the classes I took was Japanese cinema, which was amazing. Um, we really studied uh, post World War II Japan. Um, so also, I mean, it was a very insightful about the economic and the socio-political climate of Japan post-World War II. And I could why... easily be a history class. I, exactly. I mean, I teach, I'm a social studies teacher. Oh my so like, I'm like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, why were, why were the Japanese making films? Why were they making, you know, horror films like uh, Quiet On, where, you know, um, it's a really goes back to feudal Japan and uses the imagery of, you know, uh, ghosts and, and, uh, and, and stuff like that. And that kind of Japanese, old ancient Japanese lore. Like, um, we also watched a ton of Ozu films and he's a prolific Japanese, uh, filmmaker. And, uh, we watched Late Spring. That's a film of his that's beautiful, very, very poetic. And it just follows, uh, a young girl who's living with her father and she's trying to decide if she wants to take care of her father, stay at home or do what her best friend is doing, which is joining the workforce, which is something that um, back in the 1950s, a lot of women, Japanese women were deciding to do like leave the household and, and start working. So it's a, a very, very uh, educational film and just a beautiful film. So uh, yeah, and um, I think in that class, we also watched a lot of J-horror. Oh, so in the 1990s, there was a huge, uh, just a huge surge of J-horror that came out in the late 90s, the early 2000s, um, like the, like Ringu, like obviously I'm sure everyone has seen that. Um, we also watched uh, The Audition. I mean, I can list so many films, literally, I, I could go on and on. Oh my um, gosh. You've, also, you've got, I was going to say, you've <laughs> got to send Joey a list. Yeah, because I want him to like superimpose that list here because I think that would be just amazing for our viewers and for us. I'm gonna I'm gonna stranglehold him into watching this. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'd have to strangle to hold him because I think he'd be all excited. Um, but that's a that's really really phenomenal to be able to have that type of insight, and I'm positive that that had to have really impacted your work and enriched your work so much. Um, because that's, that's a whole other layer to the artistry and the creativity of filmmaking that again, unfortunately tends to be perhaps overlooked and is something that I would argue is just as impactful, if not more so than um, the yeah. words that are being said by an actor or the way that the actor says words. I mean, even choices that an actor makes that are driven by the direction that is given from the director, that there's, that's purposeful. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there are some things that we see and you think, oh my God, this is like a horrible actor. This person made these awful. Why would they make these choices? It's like, <laughs> Wait a minute. They probably had some direction that also kind of guided them in this way. And perhaps there is commentary that you're not finding on that character. Exactly. Um, I've, I've worked with the young actors before, and that's a lot that we go into is into that literary like synthesis of the, the script itself and what is intent and what type of background would you have for this character? Why do you find these choices applicable to this character gleaning from whatever you've seen on the script and so I mean that's just so amazing to see your side of it in terms of your your areas of study it sounds like we have a phenomenal program here yeah Uh, not a lot of people know that um you chair gb does film production which is really interesting I mean but um, I'm here to get the word out, guys. We, we do film production on UTR GV. <laughs> Yay! Yay! It sounds yeah. like it's growing. Especially it if they're looking at getting a, a, a sound stage. And you said that there are so many different events that they've got. And going they, on. Uh, they just got a grant last uh, two semesters ago. They Or last semester, they got a grant and they bought a ton of new equipment. They bought... Uh, a ton of black magic cameras and they bought a ton of sound equipment. I got a sneak peek at it. Um, one of my friends, he's, 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 he essentially runs the equipment department and he's like, Kristen, look what we got. And I was like, like wanted to cry because I I just graduated and you guys just got all this amazing equipment. Now I can't use it. So yeah, that's going to be very exciting for all the students to, to be able to use that for their work. It's going to just elevate all of their um, films immensely. This is so rich in information. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so you mentioned that you had done film, film production, film theory, but also you're a linguist. Oh. right <laughs> why well, do I would say linguist I mean, <laughs> cultural a cultural enthusiast perhaps mm. <laughs> a French culture French culture yeah Parisian wow. yes <laughs> wow yeah. that was a, a little bit about minor. that yeah that was my minor and so uh it's a like it's also like film studies it's 18 credits um I finished in about like a year, I think. I finished that very quickly. Um, But it essentially consists of uh, a few French language classes. I think you take three French, two or three French language classes. And that's kind of goes deep into the dialect, into um, the vocabulary. And you learn, you know, how do you say like, hello, how are you? Um, You say like, how do you say hello? My name is Kristen. Bonjour, je m'appelle Puisson. You know, you say stuff like that. That's yeah. that's like the real base level stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. I love it because it wasn't it wasn't just bonjour, je m'appelle. It was like bonjour, je m'appelle. <laughs> I was like, wow. Here's the other side. I love it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a, so that, that's kind of like a, I think when you take the actual, uh, major, you do, I think you do way more, lang- more, way more language than what I did. Um, but, uh, besides that, there is other classes they had in that, um, in that, uh, minor track. Uh, so we also did a little bit of, uh, linguistic theory. So we studied like cognates. We studied um, the Indo-European language. How did we get the English language? How did we get French? Where did it all derive from? That was very interesting. Um, So like that kind of goes hand in hand with cognates. Cognates are words that sound like other words in other languages. And, you know, you're like, oh, so, you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a word right now off the top of my head. Can't think right now, but. There's a lot in French, Spanish, and English. Essentially, like those three languages are, if you're good at, if you can speak Spanish, you can speak French, to be well, honest. they're Romance languages. Exactly. And it, exactly. I mean, not, not English. English is Germanic, but you have your Romance languages that all align. Um, and then we have a lot of Latin-based words in English 
Romance languages are derived from Latin. So it totally makes sense. And, you know, it's so funny. I, I speak Spanish, not conversational. I speak more conversational Spanish than academic perfection Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm sorry. But uh, I got to be honest. But um, I had some friends in Los Angeles. I lived in Los Angeles for a number of years. And I have some friends that were from Italy. Oh, and they would wow. speak Italian around me. And I was like, oh, you guys are talking about this, blah, blah, blah. And like, <laughs> you speak Italian? Oh, my. And I was like, no, I speak Spanish. But I can understand a good, like, 80% of that. Yeah. I got it, you know. And it's it's, it's interesting because perhaps it's a uh, pronunciation difference from French and Italian and Spanish, but I did not necessarily have that same type of experience when I encountered French speakers. Um, and so it was beautiful <laughs> to hear you yeah. speak French with, uh, with your fabulous, wonderful accent that is more <laughs> appropriate um, because it's reading it, I think is easier, right? To see the cognate in action and to, to make that connection as opposed to the auditory. Oh yeah. Like, um, I had to do a lot of my homework in French. So, you know, we had to write in French and definitely like writing in French was easier than speaking it and have someone who's like, has the native tongue speak to me. Like, I was just kind of like, whoa okay yeah, I, I got like maybe like the first few words um yeah it's it's jarring how uh, different it is and, it, and for everyone uh it is different for everybody like some people are like oh I can you know have conversation French and it's easy for me but I can't write it and the same mm. goes for like Spanish too you know like my mom is um she speaks Spanish and uh she but she can't write it like at all oh. so it's very interesting how all of our brains work differently like that. Yeah. We process language. It's really interesting. I believe one of the bios that my husband gave me was good films make your life better. So oh, yeah. can you elaborate yeah. on that? Tell us a little more how and which film would you say for you? Um, yeah, I definitely say good films make your life better. Um, and I wouldn't necess necessarily say that like they can, you know, pick you out of like a depression spell but I would say that films enrich us because they teach us life lessons that maybe are hard for us to comprehend in real life when we're in them when we're experiencing them but if we go to the movie theater and we watch a character that's having to go through grief and we've been through grief then it helps us process our own trauma better so it's a uh, it's a word I'm looking for it's very cathartic. Cinema is very cathartic. It really helps us project ourselves on screen onto the characters, onto the characters, and it helps us deal with our lives better. And and um, I mean, there's tons of films I've seen that have done that to me. Um, I guess like off the top of my head would be, I think I recently saw this film called, um, it's, a, it's a 1960s film from uh, the French filmmaker Agnes Varda, and it's called uh, Cleo from Five to Seven. Mm -hmm. And in the film, it follows a young woman um, who's just been told by a fortune teller that um, she's gonna get back lab results and they're gonna be bad. And so the film literally follows her through her day as she's just learned this, from a fortune teller and she's awaiting lab results back from her doctor oh, and it's gosh. just about how she processes that that kind of that anxiety and and life and and it just it's a beautiful film it's very like it really covers how we deal with life's like hardballs essentially and so that was a film that I, I watched, actually. I watched it at UTRGV for one of my classes. And um, that was a, a very cathartic film for me. I was like, yeah, I know I've been through that. I've been waiting test results. And I was also going through my day like it was the end of the world. And it was um, incredible to see uh, that depicted, especially with the strong female protagonist. Um, I thought that was a really special film. 
<laughs> that is awesome. That is, that's really, you know, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. I do think good films make life better. And I think that they can be cathartic and therapeutic in their own way. And I think that's kind of, I, I feel like almost every, every person has some little superpower, you know, that everybody's walking around with. And uh, as a filmmaker, I feel like for you, that's one of yours is you have that ability to take people to the, those places and help them through things. And thank you for that. <laughs> thank you so much. You to tell us about your next project about Beat. Oh, yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm currently working on a um, mini web series. Uh, it's titled Beat. And it um, basically follows the lives of a bunch of employees of a cosmetic store and all the like shenanigans that they get into. And it's uh, it's uh, partially based on my experience working in a cosmetic store. And I can I've worked in uh, a cosmetic store. I won't say which one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just let you guys guess. Um, I worked there for like seven years. Um, and I definitely, it was a, a very insane experience. I, I think everybody should work in a cosmetic store once, even if you're a guy, like just do it. Cause it's really interesting. The people that you meet, the personalities that you meet, very interesting. And that's <laughs> awesome. That's a, that's a fresh take because you've heard different types of, of workplaces, you know, superstore, you've got, yeah. um, what was it? Uh, six feet under that was the funeral home, funeral home directors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this would be amazing. That's fantastic to think of a, a fresh take of something. Cause I mean, really you think about cosmetic stores and they're everywhere and so yeah. many people go to them. I, there's gotta be some amazing stories. I am excited to watch beat. Do you have <laughs> a projected time that it comes out? Or um, right now we're in pre-production. Okay. So I'll definitely let you guys know when it's yeah. uh, you know post. <laughs> we would love, love to promote that as yeah. much. Maybe we can have you on again. Oh, that would be amazing. I, I think that. that would be so much fun. You've been such a joy to talk to. I I have I have these like things where I do rapid fire, like three things, three favorite food, three best things about living in the RGV. And it's like <laughs> I've been so enthralled with you as a person that I am just like I I I'm I'm sure she eats and I'm sure that her food is fabulous, but tell me more about <laughs> film. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm uh, so glad that I got to speak with you and, and thank you so much for letting me talk about uh, my time at UTRGV and, and letting me um, kind of promote it a little bit. Um, I think it's really important for people in the Valley who are um, just like, they're unaware that it exists and, and it exists and, and it's something that they can pursue. And, uh, and yeah, it's just, it's just really fabulous program, honestly. <laughs> I'm so glad. And you know what, they couldn't have a better spokesperson really. <laughs> you. you are a strong, amazing, very intelligent woman. And that is something that I feel we need more of. And I know we have a lot of them, but we don't promote them enough. You know, and you're Latina and you're from this area. I mean, girl, you've got it all going on. That's awesome. That is really, really phenomenal. And I'm so blessed to be able to try and highlight you through, um, through our program, because that's, that's what we want. We want the world to see you in all of your mastery and all of your beauty in fantastic ways. So thank you guys for doing that for, for platforming, um, RGV artists. I think that's amazing what you're doing. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Until we meet again. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. Thank Until you. <laughs> we're, we're like right there. <laughs> we'll have you again. I promise. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.